Starting here with Prima Marketing Spring Farmhouse Collection, 12 by 12 paper pad. It does have foil accents. And I'm using a wood piece here. It's eight by eight in size. It's actually an insert to a shadow box put out years ago by Seven Gypsies Company. Um, and I found these at Tuesday morning. There was ones with circles and squares and I bought up every one they had because I love the texture of the circles or squares. And then I just think it just the te or the quality of the wood is nice and thick so it adds a nice uh, substantial weight for a background piece and I love how you know you can put paper on the back side of it so it doesn't add too much layer on top and you still get to see that paper shining through and what I'm doing here is just cutting out different pieces uh, from the uh, paper collection I don't use all of these I don't know what I'm going to use at the time that I'm cutting these out um, but you know whatever I don't use I can save for further use later on and I'm making sure that I cut the pieces small enough so that I can still see the paper shining through on the background there through the circles. And I, of course, want to use my beloved buffalo plaid uh, paper right on top there because that's just my favorite. And so I'm kind of just checking here which pieces I want to use, how I want to layer them, where I'm going to layer them. And we'll see how that turns out here in, you know, a clip or two. So what I'm doing now is I like to distress my paper usually the same way. I sew them off camera, all my papers and ephemeras. I use a sewing machine there and I'm just cutting off the excess threads. And then what I'm gonna do is distress the edges of my paper. And coming up here, I'm going to show you three tools that you can use to distress the edges of your paper. You run them along the edge and it roughens them up. You just kind of you know scrape the edges of the paper back and forth the first tool here coming up is the prima distress tool unfortunately it is hard to find now I get lots of questions on this but I love it because it's ergonomically friendly to hold but you can find this one here on your left it's by Tim Holtz another distress tool both of these are razor blades basically encased in safety so that you can't cut your fingers or anything like that if you don't have any of these and you don't want to purchase these, open up some scissors and do the same thing. It will distress the edges of your papers. So why did I buy the tools if I could have just used my scissors? Because at the time I didn't think of it. I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> but I'll continue distressing the edges here. See how this, it's just kind of this littler one is just a little bit kind of harder to hold, but it works fine. That's why I like the Prima one a lot. So the glues, Fabrifix, um, it's by Beacon. I'm coming up here with Fabri-Tac by Beacon and 3-in-1 by Beacon, all put out, of course, by the same company. I like Fabri-Tac or Fabrifix a little better only because the consistency dries quicker. That's it. They all have superior hold and quality. The Fabrifix you can only find at Hobby Lobby. Uh, the other two you can find at Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's, and Walmart, I believe. Of course, you can probably find it on Amazon, eBay, that kind of stuff. But for, you know, in-store, those are where the glues are most accessible. So there it is, my one paper shining through. And then here I come through the circles. Here I come with the other papers. See, I cut out probably 10 or 12 things. And I'm going to use, um, what is this, four? <laughs> the background and the three on top. I want to make sure this little beautiful life on the left edge shows and I want to make sure some of that floral uh, pattern shows on that little top piece. So that is why I'm kind of gluing it like this and then my buffalo plaid will go right on top. So we're going to get that settled down in here. There we go pretty want to make sure everything's all nice and straight because I can't stand when it's crooked <laughs> sorry about my hands I've been doing some other painting this is a Prima marketing resin frame Renee used to have this particular design in her shop I'm sorry she's out right now but she does have other beautiful Prima marketing resin frames uh, put out by Frank Garcia Memory Hardware Line. I love those as well. I just loved the uh, juxtaposition of the oval frame in 
um, composition with the circles of that wood piece. This is a beautiful board set. It's the Stackable Heart ATC set. It comes with two tags and two little hearts. And on top of this tag, I'm gluing an ephemera piece with this quote, which is kind of my main focus of the theme. And then the little heart that comes with the tag is the perfect size to fit over that little foil heart detail right there. Couldn't ask for it to fit any better. So I'm going to layer this down on the frame, but the roses at the top of that frame are kind of 3D and a little bit higher, and I want that ATC tag to sit level. So I have got these uh, black chipboard pieces, or also known as cardboard, and I'm cutting them in little squares and stacking them up as high as I need so that that uh, ATC card sits level on this frame. You can use uh, this chipboard, you could use negative pieces of chipboard, you could use foam pieces to do this, you can use cardboard from packaging, anything works well like this to get your layering if you need it to be leveled out. And then I also realized that I needed a little bit more sturdy right there in the center of that resin frame there. So I'm cutting out a few more of these chipboard pieces, deciding how many I need here to stack, and then I will start gluing them together and then that uh, stackable heart ATC chipboard piece for Mene bouquets will be all nice and level. Just kind of coming to the end here, get it all together, and now it's nice and sturdy. I forgot to glue a piece here, I wanted it under that quote, but wasn't going to work because that is already stuck down. <laughs> so I just went ahead and glued it under the ATC piece. Here, and this is just a little ephemera piece from the Spring Farmhouse collection. So the glue was still wet on those cardboard pieces, so I was able to stack it right underneath there. This is a beautiful board frame from Rene Bouquets. It's called the Heart Deco Circle Frame. I love it because of the hearts around the perimeter of it. This is the small size, and I wanted to bring the circles back up into view on the top part of what I was working on here because of the circles in the background. Of course, I wanted to kind of bring that circles back up to the front perimeter again. So I just kind of glue that in there. And then these pieces are Rene Bouquet's printed beautiful board. Love them. They were the perfect shade of kind of peachy pink to go with the Spring Farmhouse collection. They come in a set of four. They're called Romance and Roses, little corner pieces. So I just kind of tucked them in here on the upper left and lower right portion of this project. And then coming up next, these are a set of six beautiful board clock hands from Rene Bouquets. I'm just going to use one here, right here on the edge. And I'm using the extra large size and I'm using one to offset a piece that I'm going to use later on in this project. These are mulberry flowers from Mene Bouquets. They come in a set of 13. They're roses and leaves in the dusty peach. And this three layer flower applique is also from Mene Bouquets. They come in a set of two and you can choose your color, either dusty rose white or a mixture of the two and don't you love this pitchfork it's the last one I found a big like sandwich bag full of them at a garage sale years ago I'd given some of them away and now I wished I had a few of course but I had to use that in this project because you know this is farmhouse inspired and y'all know that goes with farmhouse right so this lace I'm going to be using is from Rene Bouquets. It's a wide floral embroider lace. It's an ivory. It's four and a half inches wide. I love it. 
But what I want to use here is just kind of this little scalloped edge just to add a little bit of shabby chicness to it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and glue those on here. And then over the top of that, I'm going to add a little bow that I made off camera out of some crochet lace from my stash. And then I had some of this burlap trim. I cut it down real skinny, pulled the strings off the edge so it looked frayed, and I'm going to glue that in as well. And then I have this really thin, thin, super thin twine. I'm going to wind it up several times and then kind of make a little bow out of it to add to this whole bow, this whole bow ensemble, get my words out here, just to give it a little bit more texture as if the other pieces don't provide that. But you know, twine is farmhousey, right? So I wanted to kind of get that in there as well. And I'm going to start adding some more flowers here. I use a couple of collections. Um, of course, the Spring Farmhouse Collection, two of the flower packs are called Simple Things and Our Farmhouse. And then the other uh, Prima Marketing Collection of flowers I'm using here is from the Pretty Pale Collection. And those package of flowers are called Flash Beauty. All of these three packs can be found at Renee Bouquet's. And I'm just kind of deciding where I want to go with my flowers. I'm kind of using these, you know, pinks and grays and blacks and kind of uh, really kind of tan colors. I have to get my buffalo plaid flower in there to kind of bring out that buffalo plaid paper. And I'm just trying to decide my flower placement without covering too much of that little pitchfork up but it does cover up a little bit more than I intended but I wanted to use so many of the flowers so something's gonna get covered the flash beauty flowers from pretty pale collection are those little polka dot ones those uh, are the only ones I use from that pack of flowers getting everything glued in here just about done with this piece. It came together nice and easy, nice and quick. Another Renee K Mulberry flower in there, kind of down below. Straighten up my claw hand. Oh, look at that. I, I'm going to straighten up my claw hand in a minute. These are beautiful board, beautiful bits pieces called Lily. I love these beautiful bits. Uh, they're all different kind of, um, there, see, I fix my clock hand. <laughs> they're all different kind of designs and they come in a little Renee Bouquet jar and they're perfect to tuck in things. That's why they're called beautiful bits. This collection here that I just showed you is beautiful board fancy fall tuck-ins. Again, small pieces, laser cut chipboard. They come in a set of 23 and I wanted to use the little leaf pieces here. I thought it would just be really cute tucked in with all the flowers thought it kind of added a great farmhouse look to this but a set of 23 you can't beat that all the cute little acorns and corn on the cobs all having to do with fall but you can still use all the pieces this is beautiful board beautiful words sweet as honey there's a bunch of different sets in Renee's shop I'm just gonna use a sweet word this is an ephemera piece called homemade happiness and do you see how long this piece is since it's so long, that's why I use that extra large long claw can to the left to offset the length of this um, quote here. And these are a uh, beautiful printed board again from Renee's shop. These are called white doves. They're a set of six. This is the tiny size. They're about two inches in length, kind of the wind, uh, wingspan. And I'm going to finish it up with these favorite butterflies of mine. They are Renee Bouquet Magical Miniature Double-Sided Aurora Borealis Butterflies. This is in the pink shade. Kind of adjust everything here. And I think this project turned out just beautiful in a little amount of time. Please remember to like this video, comment, and subscribe. I will also have coupons down below for ReneeBouquets.com. Uh, there's one day left in the month of April, so that coupon code will be down below and the new co coupon code for the month of May. 
I hope you enjoyed this project. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.